My brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. Our liturgy continues on page four and following. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Together we pray. Almighty and generous God, you are the creator and giver of all that is good. We thank you and praise you for the beauty of the earth, for our work, our families, our loved ones, and all of the gifts which we have been given. By your grace, may we show gratitude by sharing what we have received, always mindful that in serving others, we are serving you. Guided by that same grace, help us to be good stewards who care for your earth and who work to preserve it for future generations. We remain grateful for your constant love, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the presence of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the third chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God.
reading from the first letter of John, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Brothers and sisters, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know what it is, is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him will purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 36th verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. 
They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. You may be seated, please. <clears throat> Some words from the psalm appointed for today. Psalm 4 and verse 6. Many people are saying like the psalmist, Oh, that we might see better times. Many people are saying, like the psalmist, Oh, that we may see better times. I speak to you today in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalmist's words ring just as true now as they have throughout the centuries since they were written. The news, if you've been following, is full of war, climate crisis, political polarization, gang violence, right here at home, murders, and suffering. It often feels impossible to see a way forward that will end in global peace. Communities feel torn apart. Families are torn apart. The future looks bleak. One of the elements 
that connects the readings for today helps us to name that darkness and bleakness out there in the world. It is sin, S-I-N, sin. Sin is a peculiar word. Many Christians, including priests and theologians, shy away from the language of sin these days. You start talking about sin and people get feelings, edgy. It is understandable why the word often gets swept under the carpet. Fire and brimstone preachers have weaponized the language of sin to diminish people's conceptions of themselves, branding their hearers as depraved sinners, unworthy of love, and as some say, not saved. There are serious pastoral and theological reasons to abandon that kind of turn or burn, fire and brimstone, hell or heaven sermons. And yet, in the move away from regular preaching about sin, a vacuum op opens up and our ability to name what is wrong with the world becomes diminished. Confronting sin is always uncomfortable, always uncomfortable and unsettling, but it is a necessary part of the Christian story. That's why Christ died on the cross. Hmm? The text today, when taken together, the epistle from Acts, and the second reading from 1 John, when taken together, says something deeply profound about the nature of sin. And the first thing about sin, these texts raise is that it is corporate, corporate. And that's why in corporate worship we have a general confession, the act of penitence, a general confession, and we have a general absolution. While wrongdoing can be and is done at the individual level, that is, you and I, we do wrong sometimes. When these passages talk about sin, they talk about something done as a group. Read the first and second lesson together. Talk about sin as a group. When Peter is preaching in Acts, he uses the second person plural to speak of sin. Here's what he says, all of you, all of Yenna rejected Jesus and all of Yenna rejected the Holy and Righteous One. That's what he says, read the text. Here, Peter is speaking of a group failing to do the right thing. Remember what they said? Crucify him. And it's interesting, that's the part of the crowd. Your part, not mine. Peter does not single out any individual from this crowd mob that call for the crucifixion. And one of the most beautiful things about humans is that we like to group and cluster together. 
even after church, you know, they got a little, little group here, a little group there. Yeah. Hope they're not talking about the dean or the deacon. They're talking about something. We like to group and cluster together. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a survival mechanism that, at its best, allows for communal enterprises and mutual flourishing of all people. Our uh, brothers and sisters from Haiti, they gathered together in a commune. And I didn't know that our brothers and sisters from Jamaica, they also gathered together in their commune, as it were. And yet, at its worst, this tendency to group and cluster has led human beings to form groups that often destabilize communities, harm the most vulnerable, and hijack rational decision-making processes. First John teaches that sin is lawlessness. Sin is missing the mark. The Greek text reflects an ambiguity in whether or not this law-breaking is intentional or done in ignorance. Nevertheless, sin is when humans turn from the way of justice, from the way of righteousness, to the way of unrighteousness that brings with it consequences. There is a consequence when we sin. Remember that. Sin pays a wage, and the wages of sin is death. How many of the problems in the world or in our communities arise from because of mob-like, gang-like behavior? government has now decided to put a, a gang bill in place because there is a problem. The harm of bullying and now cyberbullying. Bullying in school. Sometimes I believe some church people try to bully me too. <laughs> My Lord. A lot of priests sometimes feel that way. Vestry try to bully you. The harm of bullying and now cyberbullying can be traumatizing and tragic when the persons are targeted as prey. That kind of dehumanization has led to all kinds of horrors across the globe throughout history. Around the world, different forms of genocide are perpetrated against those from other ethnic groups, race, or nationality. Every war and conflict rely on the individual surrendering their morality as to what is right or wrong. But like the psalmist, we cling to the hope that there are better times in the future. Better days, in other words, are ahead. A second lesson about sin is that redemption is also corporate. Redemption is also corporate. Peter tells the crowd gathered there that sin is not the final word in their story. So in your story and my story, remember, sin is not the final word. He preaches. He says, and now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance 
as did also your rulers. He goes on to say, repent therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Here, he similarly uses the second person plural form of you. In essence, he's saying something like, all of you participated in the mob before. You were part of the crowd that said, crucify him. But there's a better way to be together in community. Indeed, there's a better way of being even with those who are not part of your community. In God's power, brother, brothers and sisters, in God's power, love can overcome sin. There's an antidote to letting the worst of our human tendencies run rampant. And that antidote is the third important lesson about sin. Sinner is not an identity. That is not at our core who we are. Despite what some others might preach, the author of 1 John is clear about that. He says, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Read it in the text. Children of God, and that is what we are. Beloved, we are God's children now. <clears throat> and so, who we are matters. Who we are makes a difference. <clears throat> we are part of the family of God and we are called to spread that message throughout the entire world. We are, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, blessed, hallelujah, and highly favored. Isn't that wonderful? You and I are part of the family of God. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in the likeness and image of God. And we are blessed and highly favored by God. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. In the gospel reading from Luke, Jesus tells his disciples that after his resurrection, he says, repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Friends, there is good news in the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness. If sin is communal and derives from letting a mob mentality hijack or hijack our morality, redemption happens when we live out of our identity as God's children. When we live out our identity as God's children. When we bask in the love of the divine and rest in the knowledge that God loves us. Remember, for God so loved the world. God loves us. Our perception of the world can begin to change. And it is not just our perception of the world that changes, but our relationship within it start to shift as well. Instead of seeing the other that needs to be punished or brought into line, we see as God sees. We seek as God seeks, looking for ways to show love and mercy, not death and destruction. 
The proclamation of the gospel across the world is not that others need to become like us. The good news is not that everyone is already the same. There are real differences that divide and separate us. The good news is that the brokenness around us does not have the final say. The brokenness around us does not have the final say. The good news is that as we bask in God's love, we can identify when and where we are letting the mob rule in our thoughts, hearts, and actions. There is another way. Through God's love, we stumble together through the darkness, learning together how to be God's family. As the church, as individuals, as groups, we've made mistakes. We've all made mistakes in this life, in our journey. We've all made mistakes. We've given ourselves as individuals over to the whims of the, of the mob, as it were. We've let differences become an excuse for structural and systemic injustices inequality, material violence and discrimination. In that way, we've given ourselves over to lawlessness and ungodly behavior. But, listen carefully, friends, those mistakes do not have the final word on who we are. Your mistakes does not have the final word on who you are. God's love, brothers and sisters, has the first and last say on our identity. And that identity is love. For those who live in love, live in God, and God lives in them. This divine way of being is not about abstract love, but a love that leads to a real change within us. Agape love, God's love. The text for today and the chorus of Holy Scripture attest, attest to the fact that God came in love he came in love to give love. Isn't that wonderful? As I said earlier, for God so loved the world, he came in love to give love. When we find ourselves longing for better days, when we find ourselves in the bleak of despair that the world is marred beyond all repair, there is yet hope. And our hope is built on Jesus Christ. Yes, there are real material harms perpetrated in the world. We name that as sin, S-I-N. However, however, we proclaim that sin is not the end of the story. We proclaim that we are we proclaim that who we are a people whose identity is grounded, rooted and grounded in a divine love that pulls us out of our darkest days and from our darkest impulses. And as First John says, and I will finish on this, he says, and I want you to remember it, he says, we should be called children of God. And then he backs it up. We shall be called children of God, for that is what we are. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, blessed 
and highly favored. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 9 of the Bulletin. I believe in God. The intercessions can be found on page 10. We will use form D. Our Heavenly Father has promised through our Lord Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us therefore pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the Church of God in every place, especially for Howard, our Archbishop for this diocese, our Bishop Leish, our Assistant Bishops Drexel and Gilbert, and all the people of God. We pray for our country and all nations of the world and for all peoples in their various callings. We pray for our own community, for this parish, for our families, friends, and all who live and work with us. We pray for the poor, the sick, the unemployed, the handicapped, all who have requested our prayers and all who seek the prayers of the Church in their time of trouble. We commemorate the departed. Accept these prayers, O Lord our God, for the sake of your Son our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us, therefore, together confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, 
and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Kindly stand, please. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Brothers and sisters, once again, good morning to you all. It's wonderful to be back. I want to say right up front, thank you to uh, Deacon Pinder, who kept things in decency and good order. And uh, thank Father Kerry Marcel for celebrating on Sunday. As you know, the deacon, uh, his order of ministry doesn't allow him to celebrate the Eucharist yet. But I have good news for you. Good news this morning. The uh, Commission on Ministry has approved the ordination of Deacon John. He has he has passed the test so far. Ordination is coming up soon, hopefully by the end of August. So please continue to pray for him and encourage him, and we will get back to you as to what he needs for his ordination, all right? Uh, he's, I've already spoken to him about putting that list together, and so once he's put the list together, we'll publish it, and we expect you to govern yourselves, hallelujah, accordingly. That's the process that I use when I am a director or whatever. Okay, uh, we take this opportunity to extend a very warm and cordial welcome to all who are visiting with us today. We are delighted to have you visit and worship with us, and we want you to know that you are always welcome to do so. So if you're visiting, I would ask please that you quickly stand for us so we can see who you are and welcome you here at Christ Church Cathedral. Yes, please welcome these beautiful ladies up front. Yes, yes gentlemen at the back. Yeah, no, lady at the back. Yes, thank you. Wonderful to have you. God bless you all. Uh, please take a copy of today's bulletin with you. I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, I just want to emphasize on page 23, uh, Good Shepherd Sunday is coming up this coming Sunday. It's coming Sunday. It's Good Shepherd Sunday, fourth Sunday always of Easter. And uh, the emphasis on that Sunday is the training of our clergy. We have 11, 12, or 11 altogether at Summit Codrington in the United States uh, in training. <clears throat> and that's very expensive. So we want you to be as generous as you can in that. If you have the envelopes, uh, the, if you're using the envelope system, there's one there that says, I believe, theological education. We want you to put a minimum of whatever you can afford. <laughs> it caught you there, huh? Yeah. Be as generous as you can. The Lord blesses a cheerful giver. Uh, the Esprit meeting will be on Tuesday at 6 p.m. up at the Dean Patrick L. Adderley Parish Hall, 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Uh, Birthdays, wedding anniversary, and those traveling. 
anyone, both days this week, wedding anniversary and those traveling. As you come forward, please note on page 17 how to receive Holy Communion. If you are baptized, you are allowed to receive communion. All right? If you are baptized. And you have three different choices there. <clears throat> now, uh, all these birthdays? <laughs> traveling? So we have some birthdays? Let me see your hand. Birthdays? Traveling? Birthday. Birthdays and traveling. Okay, beautiful. Where are you traveling to? Birthday? You... Give me what you got for me before you go. <laughs> you know what I like. Yes, all right. That's between us now. It's between us all. All right. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks to you uh, for these, your children, who are celebrating uh, a birthday this week. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life, of love, of health, and family. As they celebrate another birthday, we pray, O oh God, that their commitment to you would be renewed and strengthened, and they would give you thanks for sparing their lives to see another year. Led by the Holy Spirit, may they seek always to live lives that reflect your love. And we ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those traveling, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel. Surround them, dear Lord, with your loving care. Protect them, Heavenly Father, from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be thou blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, those who are traveling can return to your seat, please, and those celebrating the birthday, face the congregation for me, please. Birthday? Happy birthday, please. Brothers and sisters, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God, the choir.
Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. For them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your 
Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Let 
let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. John the Baptist, patron saint of our diocese, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God.
The Lord be with you. Together let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And uh, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and His Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.